Thanks for staying with us. Let's bring you some national news now. The Home Minister has stood by his earlier comment on the new phenomenon of saffron terror. He said that the message shouldn't be lost in the furore over the phrase and right-wing groups were behind some of the blasts in the country. Incidentally, a defamation suit was filed today against the Home Minister for his saffron terror remark in an Ahmedabad court. In the latest retort to that, senior Congress leader Dig Vijay Singh has once again aired his differences, saying that he took objection that a colour was being associated with terror. This phrase has been used by a number of people in the past. He has given dates. August 16, 2001, there was a debate in the Lok Sabha on saffronization of education. Then a number of others have used the phrase. And I've also noted that a couple of other uh, colleagues of mine in the UPA have said that they have used the phrase in the past. So I cannot claim a patent on that phrase. Now, with a month more to go for the big games that the country has been waiting for, security will be in place soon enough. After a high-level meeting today, the Home Minister P. Chidambaram took stock of the security measures for the fortnight-long Commonwealth Games beginning on the 3rd of October. There will be four layers of security during the Games, with National Security Guard 2 being deployed, with helicopter-borne surveillance as well. But another serious worry for the Commonwealth countries is the spread of dengue in Delhi. 20 countries have written to the Commonwealth Games Organizing Committee seeking information about the situation and measures being adopted uh, to check the disease ahead of the mega sporting event. A total of 24 countries have asked in writing about the dengue status in the city and whether it has become an epidemic or not. The dengue menace has uh, showed no signs of abating in the national capital where the number of cases crossed 1,000 today, with 77 more patients testing positive for the vector-borne disease. Now, if C is for cricket, it's now for controversies as well. The tainted trio of the Pakistan cricket team, Captain Salman Bhatt, Mohammed Amir and Mohammed Asif, will face another round of questioning on Thursday from Scotland Yard for their alleged involvement in the spot-fixing scandal that has rocked international cricket even as England's players' body demanded their ouster from 2020 and the ODI series. Pakistan Cricket Board, meanwhile, confirmed that the three are not in danger of being arrested. And ahead of his meeting with the PCB chief, a grim ICC boss said he was extremely disappointed by the turn of events. Very, very disappointed. I guess um, I'm at a loss for words to describe how not just myself, but uh, every loving cricketer and a fan uh, of this wonderful sport would be feeling right now. Well, allegation after another in cricket after Brad Haddon and Shane Watson. Two more Australian cricketers have alleged that they were approached by a match fixer during Australia's tour to England last year. According to a report issued by Cricket Australia, Brett Lee and Mitchell Johnson were also approached by the same Indian gangster who had earlier tried to lure Haddon and Watson. But the report also suggests that these players rebuffed all offers made by the fixer and instead chose to alarm the team manager, which was later communicated to the ICC too. Well, moving to a different sport, the beautiful game of football can get as tempting as giving up a lucrative corporate job to start a soccer academy. Well, if you don't believe me just yet, here's how Soccer and Me was born. For Kalpana, a football player by training, it was hard to decide when she had to choose between a regular job and her passion for soccer. But her love for the game was irresistible. She quit her job and started an academy which she named Soccer and Me. I was working with a corporate company and uh, due, due to the passion for football, I always used to take leave and then try to find time for coaching. Then I thought I, I was interested in developing them. Then I was thinking, why am I doing something, you know, I was uh, in a confusion, which I have to select, whether I have to do the corporate uh, job or should I look in for the football. Then I decided I like football more. So that's how this academy was born. Since May this year, when the academy opened, 50 young players have been training here. Some of them were sent overseas for international exposure. It was a different experience to me. We learned uh, new skills from those AFC coaches. 
Some women from the Tamil Nadu force too have been training at the academy. Five years ago, the police department was not allowed to go. Now, the soccer academy is not allowed to go. Our aim is to get the skills and get the academy. We are going to join the academy. We are going to join the academy. We are going to join the academy. The academy is the only place in Chennai where young soccer enthusiasts are trained as referees. Kalpana says she has plans to involve well-known coaches and referees in the training sessions. In Chennai, with Sudarshan, this is Ashmit Kumar for NDTV Hindu. Now ahead of the big buy this festival season, bad news comes calling. The price of the yellow metal is going up, up and away. Gold today climbed to an all-time high of 19,405 rupees per 10 grams. That's up by 215 rupees from the previous record in June. The precious metal mirrored the gains in global markets, which is the trendsetter on the domestic front. Gold rose to two-month high levels in the global markets following a fall in the dollar. Silver recorded a handsome gain of 525 rupees to trade at 30,950 rupees per kilogram. A sharp rise in demand from jewellers and stockists to meet the ensuing festival season is believed to have boosted the uptrend. Now, the city is clothed in uh, colour and strains of music in the air as the birth of Lord Krishna is celebrated today. Our reporter Pratiksha caught up with the celebration in the city. This is Janmashtami celebrations and I'm back at this Con Temple in the evening and you can see the huge crowd that has gathered behind me in a queue to go get the blessings of Lord Krishna and you can even hear the bhajans and the pujas that are in full swing. These artists actually began very early this morning and the bhajans have begun at around 4 o'clock this evening and they're still going very strong. In fact, there are people who have come to swing the traditional Lord, uh, swing of Lord Krishna and they've also uh, uh, you know, started having competitions. There is a Mohini Atam and a Bharatan Atam concert also being held in different parts of the temple. Earlier, the ladies actually had a concert where they uh, designed the best Krishna's Padam and best garlands and even columns. And uh, the temple has also started giving out uh, sweets to celebrate Janamashtami. So this temple is the place to be today evening. Back to the studio. Well, I'm sure a sweet celebration for Pratiksha at least. That's the news tonight from all of us here. Thanks for watching. Good night.